everybody. Welcome to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Mark Zimmerman and uh, Zimmy in the house. It's been a long time since you've been on the TV show. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, you know, all you other big celebrities get the chance to be on the show all the time. You know, I just get to fill in when no one else is that. I don't, I don't know if it's celebrities as much <laughs> as uh, you've, you've stayed under the radar for a long time. But uh, welcome back to the show. Well, thank and, you. Uh, Excited for this the first uh, first segment. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. This first segment should be good. Brought to us by the Best Western Auburndale, great partner of ours. Absolutely, yeah. and another great partner of ours is the Ledger Media Group. And Bill Kemp is here uh, with us today to talk about Polk County High School football. And this is this is one of those subjects that uh, gets everybody revved up in the fall. Well, you know, you wait all year for this kind of stuff. You know, you have basketball, <laughs> baseball. It's great, but there's something special about football. And we're two weeks away from the Jamboree Games. It'll yeah. start two weeks from tonight. Well, welcome to Sports Central. And we appreciate you stopping by. And uh, a lot of changes this year. Uh, coaches moving around in the county and uh, some new looks to uh, programs that uh, uh, kind of had the same head coach for quite a while. But uh, what can we see in some of those changes? There's a lot. It's like they've taken all the teams and coaches and just put them in a, a big aquarium and stirred it up. <laughs> and just to see where they settle at. And you need a map to get everybody there. But, uh, you know, Richard Tate, uh, who was at Ridge last year, and they won the district. They, they pulled the big up, upset over Lakeland. He is now at George Jenkins. Uh, Haines City has Ron Johnson now, who's come over there. And all of a sudden, this team was 1-9 last year. And a lot of people are picking them to, to win that district, which that district is, uh, well, as Coach Johnson said, it's the SEC this year. Hmm. Uh, we have Russ Rogers, who's come down from the Panhandle. He'll be taking over at Ridge to replace uh, Richard Tate. Uh, Tommy Lewis is an interesting uh, person that's come on the scene. He came from Hilton Head, South Carolina, and he was the National Christian Athletic Association Coach of the Year twice, like 2006 and 2010. And he takes over at Victory Christian. And a lot of times, small schools are taken for granted. I've watched him out there coaching with the seven-on-sevens. He's very aggressive, very knowledgeable, and very calm. There's something you'll, you'll like about watching him coach. I think you know, big things are in store for that school. There's a lot of changes. A few more to hit on. Michael Burns comes in at Tenor Rock. Uh, Val Johnson, just in the last week, has gone to All Saints. And uh, Jason Butler will be right mm -hmm. here at Bartow. So, and there's a lot of experience with Jason Butler there, and I think we're going to see some, some big things out of the Yellow Jackets. Bill, there's certainly a lot of changes this year, but there are some teams, some other teams, obviously, out there to watch. What are, what are the key teams this year uh, in the county overall? Well, I, I think, you, first of all, you've got to go right back to that um, Class 7A uh, District 5, which may be the toughest district, like I said, I've ever seen. I was talking to Richard Tate this morning. He said 25 years of high school coaching. He's never seen one this tough. Usually you hear people with the SEC in the old days, they would say, we beat up on each other, you know, so we don't have a national champ because nobody's undefeated to go play. High school football, that doesn't matter. You get one of those two playoff spots you're in. If you're healthy, you can make a move. Well, when you look at Jenkins, Haines City, Lakeland, and Ridge was that district last year. Now you add Bartow and Kathleen into the mix. Whoever comes out of there, if they're healthy, can go deep. I think Lakeland, they have a little chip on their shoulder, as we were talking about earlier. You know, they lost to Ridge last year. Lakeland is Lakeland. Mm -hmm. When you say high school football in Florida, right away, I'm, I'm thinking Lakeland, I'm thinking the Miami teams, Daytona mainland, stuff like that they may be flying under the radar. And that's so weird to say <laughs> for the Lakeland Dreadnoughts. Well, They're flying under the radar, but they think, may be. Let's think about it, though. Lakeland is used to playing for state championships. Right. They didn't even win their district last year. Right. So when you say flying under the radar, there you go. Right, right. And, and you would think of, there's the first team you're going to talk about. But maybe this is the best thing. From what I understand, out at Stetson uh, about 10 days ago at the FCA camp, they stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Apopka, and most people say they got the best of Apopka. Apopka's the defending class 8A state champion. Mm -hmm. And I know they're great because I watched them play Winter Haven in, in the spring game. So, and there's another team, Winter Haven. The last three, four years, Winter Haven has been one of the best teams in this county. Obviously, they've had Adam Lane, now he's in Gainesville, going to play for the Gators. They've had the Border Brothers at quarterback the last four years. They're gone. So they're in this situation where they created this pistol offense for the Borders and for Adam Lane. So Coach Charlie Tate's like, what am I going to do? He's at the spring game. 
He takes to Ryan Mills, one of his defensive backs, and says, son, you're playing quarterback. And um, DeRyan told me, he went home and told his mom, I mean, she always wanted him to play quarterback. He says, mom, I'm gonna be the quarterback. She didn't believe him, she came to practice the next day to see for herself if in fact her son's gonna be the quarterback. He is, they're staying in the pistol offense. They thought the Apopka game would tell them what to do. And uh, Coach Tate's like, you know, we're gonna stay in it, but we're gonna go with a little more of a split back set. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see them run the waggle a lot more. Some bootlegs, naked bootlegs. Get Ryan Mills out in space and let him throw to Kendrick Holland. And if you know sports in, in this county, Kendrick Holland, football and basketball, he is right there. This guy is, you know, Auburn's looking at him. He's got like 16 D1 offers right now, and uh, he's gonna be a special player. We talk about that district uh, in Class 7A. What, what makes that district so tough? I'm assuming uh, it's the number of Division I athletes and Division II and, and just college-bound uh, kids that, that are in each of these programs. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, there's athletes all over the place there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Kathleen, just to run down a few, uh, Javon Harrison. He's right there. He may be the best football player in the county. But then you have to look at Haines City that has Derwin James, mm -hmm. who is being listed as one of the best football players in the nation by ESPN. And watching but he's a transfer, the, right? He was from He Auburndale? transferred. He was at Auburndale. There were two guys last year, sophomores, um, from Polk County, Luke Hires from Lake Wales and Derwin James from Auburndale that made the MaxPreps.com All-American team, their sophomore All-American team, Derwin James was one of them. Now, uh, the family, which is originally from Haines City, mm -hmm. they went ahead and moved back. They have businesses over there. So, you know, he came out after all, everything was taken care of paper-wise and went to USF for the sling and shoot with Haines City. You have 45 teams out there, the best teams in the Tampa Bay area, from Lakeland and Orlando, and you start to see who's who over two days. When you got to Sunday, by the second day, people that were talking started coming over to the Haines City sidelines. They're saying, who's that kid? Who's that kid? And you hear the words, Florida State, Florida State. He's already committed to Florida State as a freshman. Mm -hmm. He's that good. It's like he's on a pogo stick out there. They throw the ball up in the end zone, five guys go up, and all of a sudden, he's just up in the trees, emerging <laughs> among it. You remember Charles Woodson's one-handed catch yeah. against Michigan State that really won the Heisman? That's what he looks like out there. <laughs> wow. And he can just make things he's happen. He's a junior. He's, he's a rising junior. That's right, this wow. year. Now, ESPN says this is one of the top 300 football players in, in the country, and I agree. And Coach Johnson says he's going to be a first-round NFL draft choice one day. I agree. But Coach Johnson says he's not the best football player on his team. It's the wow. Law, DJ Law, the running back who for the last two years has been running out of that I formation between the tackles, powering ahead, and now he's got an offer from Urban Meyer to go to Ohio State. So he is good, and uh, he's a power back. I like that kind of runner. Um, we're going to see the same thing from Lakeland Christian with T.J. Simmons, that name. Obviously, he's got an offer from the Gators. He can run between the tackles, power, speed, you get him to going to the outside on a quick pitch right, if he plants that foot and makes that turn, he's gone 80 yards that fast because he's got the real 4-3 speed. Just to, just to, to deviate for, for a minute here, we talk about the coverage that these athletes get. I mean, you look right here at the Ledger Media Group, has polkpreps.com, and the way you guys cover what's going on in high school sports here in Polk County. How have you seen the, the coverage change You know, going back? Because before, they had to sell themselves to schools to try to get recruited. Now, it's all over the internet, it's all over these camps, these seven on sevens. How have you seen it change and, and how has Polk County benefited from the change in technology and recruiting these kids? The landscape is totally different out there now. And I think the, the key phrase is the seven on sevens. This used to be something you went to five years ago for the quarterbacks and receivers to have something to do, build some timing besides lifting weights. Right. It's become a sport in the summer. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's huge turnouts. When you go to these events at UCF and USF, there's recruiters all over the place. There's tents set up. It's like a beach day. The parents all come. Everybody's got food. And, and you get to see it's become a season in itself. And there's championships. Now, the Polk County, they're, they're playing right there with everybody. U.S. Have, has two sling and shoots. They did one in June and one in July. The small one in June, Lake Gibson shows up there. Nobody's looking at him. They were two plays away from getting into the championship game out there. They've got Trey Congdon at quarterback. He threw for 
2,000 yards last year, led this county in passing. He's got all the tools to be a Division I quarterback. He sets up, he throws off the right foot, his thumb is pointed to the ground when that ball's released, 30-yard tight spirals. You like what you see out of him. He doesn't panic in the pocket. They lost two key receivers last year. They come right back. Chris Clark comes out there running back. Looked like the best player at the 7-on-7 at the seven seven that day, and he wasn't even a target for him last year. That's how fast Congdon made the adjustments to start hitting guys. You're going, what is this, you know, Montana to Rice or something? <laughs> that team's going to be very good again. They kind of dethroned Winter Haven last year in that district and beat them. Uh, maybe Winter Haven has a chip on their shoulder now. That's going to be a great football game, Winter Haven, Lake Gibson. But the thing that's back is after a three-year hiatus, we have Lakeland playing Winter Haven again. I think the whole county is going to turn out for that one. It'll be a helmet cracker. So you mentioned a couple of the games. Any, any other key matchups throughout the season that we need to keep our eye on? Yeah, I think the old uh, battle of 17. When, when Bartow and Frostproof go at it, it's mm -hmm. going to be good. In, in that district, Fort Meade and Frostproof. Fort Meade, they really opened my eyes out uh, last week at the FCA camp um, at Lakeland Christian. They kind of came out of nowhere under the radar, again, to use that phrase, and won that tournament with Tobias Culpepper. When you look at him, he's not the super tall kid. He's not the super strong kid but he makes plays. As Jason Butler from Bartow said in the after the championship game, that kid made the best interception I've ever saw on us. We couldn't have thrown the ball any better, but you know, he turned around on a dime and snagged the ball and, and pretty much stole the show out there. Uh, yeah, there's... Well, it's been a, it's been a number of years, and, and Polk County's not necessarily used to this. We've had a, a number of uh, basketball teams, and of course the, the basketball talent here in Polk County kind of <laughs> flies under the radar, if you will, <laughs> right. because it's overshadowed by football. But recently, football, there's not been state championships the last three or four years in football. I think Lakeland might have been the, the last one uh, in the county to win a state championship. You said that going back to Class 7A, you think there's a potential for a, te a team from that district, if, if they're healthy, to make a run deep in the playoffs. Do you see any other levels or classifications where there might be a state title for Polk County? Yeah, 3A-10. Um, for the small schools, you know, you have Berkeley Prep in there, Bishop McLaughlin, uh, Frostproof, Fort Meade, Lakeland Christian. This is a very competitive, tough district, and I think somebody out of there could make a run to the state championship, or at least to you know get to the semifinals. I think who's ever coming out of 7A5 is going to play in the state championship game. I just really, really believe it. Uh, Miami schools, Lauderdale, they always seem to get there, St. Thomas Aquinas, but I think you're going to see one, maybe two Polk County teams playing for a state championship this year, and one of them's going to get it. The time has come. There's a cycle to sports, and it's right there. And if it doesn't happen this year, you're going to see it next year, because as great as these athletes are, when you talk to any coach, like a Rod Schaefer at Lake Wales that's been around, the junior class in Polk County is better than the senior class, and the senior class is great. All right. Well, that's certainly some, some great coverage. Talk to us a little bit about the Ledger Media Group and the coverage between the Ledger and the News Chief and what uh, citizens of Polk County can expect in that coverage of their local team. Well, we're going full force and we're expanding. We've, uh, we're adding some video and things like that out there. Uh, the News Chief really focuses on East Polk, so you, you get your Lake Regions, your Winter Havens, Haines City, uh, Auburndale, and there'll always be those key stories for them. Uh, the Ledger you know, has the whole ball of wax there. Uh, the staff, we've got more stringers than ever before. Uh, we're just going to go at it. We're trying to be aggressive with it. It's fun. If, if you love sports, it's not even work, and you can be going around the clock doing right. it. So. And of course, you can always go to ledger.com for uh, up-to-date live scoring of the games, and uh, so if you're in one location, you can keep up with what's going on right. in the other games. Right. Pokepreps.com, and that's being retooled a little bit, so, so you'll see some changes on that coming up right about kickoff time for the Jamboree games. All right, Bill. Well, we appreciate it. We appreciate your time, and Our we're pleasure. looking forward to another Thank successful you, fall campaign for uh, uh, high school football here in Polk County. A uh, recent event that took place here in Polk County was the Mid-Florida Table Tennis July Classic. Let's take a look at some of that footage. We'll be right back here on Sports Central.
today we have the Mid Florida Table Tennis Tour and July Classic. And it is a USATT sanctioned tournament. We have 18 tables that we're using today, and we have 71 players in attendance. Most of our players are from all over the state of Florida. We have several from Miami, some from Jacksonville, all over the state of Florida, basically. We have seven USATT major sanctioned tournaments here at Lakeland. We're sort of the mecca of table tennis for the state of Florida. We see close to 400 players from all over the USA and international areas that come to our tournaments. We've become the uh, hot spot for table tennis in Florida. Lakeland and Polk County has uh, really starting to be noticed around the nation for the high quality tournaments that we have here. Four. One, two, three. Competitively, I've probably been playing about four years. I started in college, started at USF, and this is probably my fifth or sixth tournament here at Lakeland. So I uh, got second place. Pretty happy with that today. You really have to be concentrated on like the different levels of spin in the game. It's a lot more complicated than most people would think if they don't come out here and watch. There's underspin, side spin. It's a mental game as much as it is physical. I wouldn't say I train specifically for table tennis, but it's good cross training for other sports and uh, you work up a sweat, there'll be people toweling off after every couple points, so it's pretty exhausting. People are interested in finding out about a tournament, go to www.floridatt.com slash LakelandTT. All the information is available there on the website. It tells you all about our tournaments. Also, local people who live here in Polk County, you can come out and play. You don't have to be a member. It only costs $2.50 uh, here at the Simpson Park Recreation Center here in, in Lakeland. It's a lot of fun. It's good exercise. It's inexpensive. It's just a real quality sport. It's a life sport. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Mark Zimmerman. And uh, are you a table tennis player? I, 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 I won a middle school tournament one time. You just made table that up. I did Seriously? not. You I really did not, did. actually. <laughs> we'll see, look, I, you know, nothing but award-winning uh, participants right. here at yeah. Sports Central. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm really looking, ex I'm excited about this next segment because I've kind of seen this, uh, this individual grow up through the system and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to it, but before we get that, we got a segment sponsor. Yes, segment, this segment brought to you by the Parkview Hotel, uh, over, located over in Winter Haven. Uh, again, one, another one of our great partners. We're excited to have them on board with us. Absolutely. Well, we've got Lee White here, and uh, Lee is a Florida Southern College graduate, uh, played golf at uh, Bartow High School, and uh, uh, has won a few tournaments here in the Polk County uh, amateur ranks, but uh, recently turned pro. And uh, Lee, welcome to Sports Central, and looking forward to talking to you about uh, the trials and tribulations of being a professional golfer. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate you having me on, and I, I'm excited to be here and share a little bit about what I've been up to the past few years. Yeah, let's let's start a, let's start the the, the interview or the, the the discussion here talking about the foundation, and it takes it takes a great foundation to to become a professional in anything. And uh, I've got to believe that your story starts at Bartow Golf Course, right? I agree. I agree. I've um, really been supported well by Bartow Golf Course. They support all junior golfers really well. I started taking lessons out there from Chris Banks when I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've just, I've grown up there and I've always had other junior golfers to, to play with and just uh, learn the game and, and just enjoy it. And this summer, ever since I, when I graduated from high school, Bartow High School, I 
began helping Chris with the uh, summer camp. This summer we had close to 60 junior golfers between the ages of 6 and 16 on Tuesdays and Thursdays come out and just try to learn the game and, and enjoy it. And it's, it's great to see. And Bartow Golf Courses, like I said, they've always been supportive and, and you got to have that. And I, and I see that throughout Polk County. Well, you said you started taking lessons when you were 14. As you know, my son Logan's out there, and he's 10. <laughs> so if you're turning pro, maybe there's a shot for him. Uh, yeah, he started yeah, earlier there than is, you did. There is. <laughs> yeah, if you, uh, I truly believe, you know, if you if you take the game, whatever age you take it, and you really dedicate yourself, and if you um, if you fall in love with it, you have a passion for it, then the sky's the limit. You can just depends on how hard you're willing to work. <laughs> Well, and Lee, I, I recall back when we were starting the junior golf tour, uh, the Barto, the folks on the Barto golf course, and your family right. actually were part of the group that originally formed what is now a thriving junior golf tour in Poe County. You were probably one of the first kids to play on on the tour. I was. I remember when uh, I used to have to travel to Tampa to play in any junior tournaments, and it was just you know it's a lot more convenient when the Central Florida Junior Tour started have tournaments in Lakeland, Bartow, Winter Haven, all through Polk County and that really helped grow the game throughout the county. I know that most of their tournaments now throughout the county have you know 60, 70, 80 players and that's kids, we're drawing kids from Tampa and Orlando and the surrounding areas to come play here which is great to see. Well let's talk about uh, you finished up I believe when you were at Bartow won the first district championship uh, for any Bartow High School boys golf team, right? Did, right, am yeah. I, correct I, on that? I think we won the uh, the county tournament and the district, I believe. So it was, uh, we had, my senior year, we had a great team. And we actually, I was talking to Chris Banks the other day, we were kind of reflecting on those years as he was the one of the coaches that, mm -hmm. uh, that helped us out. And uh, we kind of underachieved. We felt like with that team, looking at it now, could have done more. We could have done more. We have four guys from that team went on to play college golf so it's well, let's talk about college golf you went to Florida Southern College and uh, that was a learning process right it was it was <laughs> it was uh, it was a big stepping stone not only academically but athletically you know you you go I was a uh, all county first team my senior year and then and there's some pretty good talent around Polk County when I was playing but then you go to the Florida Southern College Division two powerhouse mm -hmm. golf in the nation and you're just one of the guys and everybody's out there to beat, beat up on you. So I, I, played, uh, I played a lot my freshman year. I didn't play in any tournaments. I redshirted and just l used that time to learn from my coach and learn from the older guys on the team about what it took to, to move to that next level. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> you talk about the struggle and, and learning the ropes and, and seeing the, the process that that had to help you. And we'll talk about it in a minute, uh, turning professionally. But during that time that you were at Florida Southern College, <laughs> you also played in the Polk County Amateur Championships, uh, kind of the big four at the time. I know they've recently right. added a fifth right. one to that. But talk about those. You've actually won three of those. Uh, tell us what that <clears throat> process uh, was about and, and what you learned well, from that. Yeah, I, I really think it helped my time at Florida Southern even when – I wasn't playing every tournament. I was able to practice and play against good competition. And then when it came to the summer, when we had the Polk County Amateur, the, the Bartow Youth Field Classic, I was more prepared for those events. And the 2010 Polk County Amateur was the first Polk County Major for me to win. And I won that in a playoff over a good friend of mine who was on the Bartow High School golf team and still plays for Georgia Southern University, Drew Guffey. So that was, a, that was big for me to get that first win individually in uh, amateur golf against many good amateurs from around the county. I, I went on to, uh, I lost in a playoff the, the next year, 2011, in the same tournament, Polk County Amateur, to Tiger Godwin from Bartow, and then won it again in 2012. So it was uh, also in 2012, I won the Bartow Youth Field Classic. So I won, last summer I won both of the premier individual stroke play tournaments in the county. Well, tell me about the win in the Bartow Youth Field Classic, because that one had to be special. Right. Because you, you started your training there. Chris Banks, obviously very instrumental in running that event. Uh, tell us a little bit about getting that victory. It was very special. It was very special to have all my friends and a lot of my family members there. And Chris, you know, it's where I started. They were all pulling for me. And it gives you, it's a little added pressure to be playing at home, because you, mm -hmm. you want to win it so bad. And, and also, I knew that 
for my path that I wanted to continue on. I wanted to turn professional after the summer and I did not want to do so without winning the Varte Youth Villa. It's just, <laughs> you look at the trophy and you see names like Andy Bean and Bob Murphy, mm -hmm. guys that are, have been successful professional golfers and you're like, I, wanna, I want my name on there. So to win that tournament was a great accomplishment and you know, I, I can always say I won the Villa no matter where I go in golf. So that, that means a lot to me. Drew, uh, uh, Lee. Drew, <laughs> Lee, yeah, as you mentioned, Drew Guffey, that kind of threw me off there. Lee, you know, uh, throughout college, you obviously, you guys are traveling all over, you're playing in tournaments. What, what are some of your, what, you know, what, what was the difference? I mean, you know, going from that high school level to the college level, and talk a little bit about, you know, the tournaments that you would play right. in there and who right. you would play against. And I think some of the, the biggest difference was learning to play other golf courses. When you grew up in Polk County, a lot of the golf courses you play here are flat, there's not a lot of elevation change. The greens are, you know, you don't see the big mounds. So when I got into college and I would go play other golf courses, I would see these, you know, even in North Georgia, we'd see where I'd have a, a yardage from the fairway to the, to the green I was trying to hit. And I wasn't used to adjusting for an uphill shot that added 15 yards. Mm. So I really struggled with that at the beginning and around the greens with the big, the big mounds and undulations. So that, that helped me a lot. It took me two or three years just to adjust to that because I'd played golf from the time, you know, seriously from the time I was 14, 15 in tournaments mm -hmm. and, and it, it was just a different look for me. Well, you took all that. You took Bartow. You took Florida Southern College. You, you took all the training that you, and you decided to turn pro. What, what, what brought you to that decision? Well, it's, it's just something I wanted to do. I, I felt that at the junior level, I won a few tournaments and I accomplished things that I wanted to do. I went on to college and I worked my way through the struggles to where my senior year I played, I played well and I was one of the top guys on the team. And I just felt like I, all the work that I had put in, I owed it to myself and I believed in myself that I can succeed at the professional level. So it's just, once you make that decision, you just have to commit to it and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where it takes me. I've been professional for about 10 months now. I've been playing events. I, I try to play several times a month if I can. I'm also working part-time, so, uh, but it's, it's a lot of fun to travel around the, the Southeast as much as I can and play different courses, play with better players. I've, I've been able to play with some guys on the PGA Tour in tournaments, so it's, it's a lot of fun. So I just, it's an interesting point, I just read an article about what it, what, being a professional athlete Whenever anybody talk, you, you talk about professional athletes, you think of the guys at the top level, the guys that are making millions and millions of dollars. But this, this was from a, a guy that was playing professional soccer in Canada. Right. And you know, barely making by, making $500 a month and bunking with four other people. Um, and that's, you're talking about making your way up through the ranks. So tell us a little bit about that because obviously right now you're, you're a pro golfer. Right. But you're not on the PGA Tour exactly, yet. Exactly, yeah. It's a, it's a <laughs> you're, misconception. You're there's, there. there's, there's many different professional ranks. It's kind of, I compare it to minor league baseball. When you, you don't go straight from, from your college, University of Florida, just because you turn prof into a professional baseball player, you're not on the Atlanta mm -hmm. Braves right away, you know. So you go through the minor league ranks and there's several different tours. The NGA Professional Golf Tour, formerly known as the Hooters Tour, most people know it's, it's the third best tour to play on if you're trying to make a living behind the web.com and the PGA Tour. So, but it depends on you know, what kind of uh, financial situation you're in. You can go out and travel and play 24, 25 events a year, or you can uh, stick around locally within the state and play every couple weeks. And that's what I've been trying to do is just play a couple events per month and keep my game sharp and try to earn money to where I can go play in bigger events and hopefully one day end up on the, the bigger tours, the PGA Tour, the web.com tour. Lee, what's the best round you ever shot? Where'd 64. You, where'd you shoot it? 64 at Bartow Golf Course. My, okay. my best round in a tournament, 65. So it's... Uh, What'd you get on the back nine? <laughs> I that's, that, well, I, that's for us. Yeah, for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, seldom do you run into those rounds, but right. when you do, they're they're special and you remember them. So that's what do you, what are you looking to do? Because you talk about uh, the different the different tours and how you make it up to the PGA. Um, 
do you have like a three-year plan or a five-year plan on how, okay, I want to move to this level, I want because right. you're essentially a free agent. Right, It's you not are. like you're in a farm system mm -hmm. for a baseball team, so you're having to do this and, and chart out your course on your own. What is your ultimate goal to try to get that card, that PGA card? Well, my ultimate goal is, is you, I break it, I try to break it down year by year. I, I've set goals for myself and I, uh, I, tr I have to travel around with with friends of mine to cut down on costs, things like that, and it, and we we kind of go together. We play these smaller tournaments, and it basically it all depends on your success. Golf's a sport that you're not guaranteed any money, whereas other other athletes, you know, if you're under a contract, you know, it only depends if you make the cut and whether you get paid or not. So that that's ultimately the deciding factor on how far you go and how fast you get there. You could. You could have no status on the PGA Tour, but if you went out and qualified for a, a smaller event and won it, well then you could go out and try to uh, maybe Monday qualify for a PGA Tour event where that's, that's just a, there'll be 150 players there and you have one day to try to qualify for two spots they might wow. give in the event. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's a tough road. It is a yeah. tough road, but I, I look forward to uh, giving it my best shot. Well, we wish you all the best and, uh, we look forward to seeing you on the PGA Tour, and uh, uh, certainly there's youth programs at Bartow Golf Course, but there's youth programs in all these courses around the, the county. The first tee has a great first program. Tee in yeah. So, all right, Lee, well, thank you so much, and good luck, and uh, uh, we wish you all the best. Thanks, I appreciate you having yeah, me good on. Good luck, Lee. Thank you. All right, well, recently we were able to go out to Safari uh, Wilderness Ranch and take a look at what they've got going on, as that's a, kind of a new venue here in Polk County. Uh, and if you haven't been able to see it, check out this footage, and uh, maybe it'll pique your interest to go out there. We'll be right back here on Sports Central. We're about to gaze at this rare and unique experience, a world away from the hustle and bustle of civilization. No sooner have you left the city, you find yourself in this African-like landscape filled with wildlife. Let's go learn some more information. Here you feel a silence enveloped by an open vista of grazing animals surrounded by cypress dome and bay trees. Enjoy the fresh breath of a safari air year-round as birds soar overhead and the stage is set. Safari Wilderness Ranch is not a zoo or a theme park. There are no crowds and no lines. Here you will enjoy a natural adventure. Knowledgeable and experienced driver guides will tour you through large herds of exotic game over 260 acres of pristine wilderness and customized safari vehicles fitted with shade canopies and stadium seating. If you prefer a more adventurous mode of transport, you can also view wild game by camelback. You can also indulge your senses in an exclusive encounter with the polite Persimians, ring-tailed lemurs. These natives of Madagascar are primates and like us have tactile pads and fingernails. Their gentle touch is similar to that of a human baby. A few lucky individuals per day accompany professional animal caretakers in their daily feeding. This experience is unforgettable. Safari Wilderness Ranch is conveniently located 6 miles north of I-4 between Orlando and Tampa, surrounded by Florida's green swamp in an expansive and exclusive wilderness area. It is a family-owned, licensed, working game ranch. They specialize in wetland exotic species, African Watusi and Irish Dexter cattle and Austrian Halflinger Horses. Safari Wilderness Ranch is a Florida agro-tourism project and is accredited by the Zoological Association of America and licensed by the USDA. Now you can join an exclusive, fun, and educational journey where you will learn about Florida's natural and human history, the conservation programs, the encounter amazing animals that are endangered or extinct in the wild. For more information on the Safari Wilderness Adventure, you can go to 
safariwilderness.com. You can also call 813-3822 or email them at info at safariwilderness.com. everybody welcome back to sports central neil duncan and mark zimmerman some great footage there from safari wilderness and uh, yeah. that's a neat venue it's it is definitely it's not not something you expect there in uh, north lakeland no well and, and that's the great thing about polk county there's right. a lot of things to see and do that you don't maybe necessarily know that there is and you can always go to visit centralflorida.org or centralfloridasports.com and uh, get more information or uh, explore Central Florida, the app or the mobile site. There's a lot of a lot of tools there right. for you to discover Polk County. And, and if uh, you want to find a hotel to stay in, you can certainly go there and you can find the Holiday Inn Lakeland North, one of our great partners, bringing this segment to us. Hey, he, he's he's on fire now. He's uh, third segment third in. Third segment in. I'm third doing segment all right. in. You're good. <laughs> well, uh, without further ado, we have a, a gentleman here who uh, who competed recently the 2013 National Senior Games and did quite well. Uh, Ted Sager, Mr. Sager, welcome to the program. Welcome to Sports Central. We welcome. appreciate your time. Thank you. Tell us about what when they came to us with this and they said that you were doing race walking. I said, what? <laughs> I don't know exactly what That's race Neil. walking I know is. What race walking is. <laughs> I don't know. What, <laughs> we don't know. Tell us exactly what it is and how you got involved. Uh, involved when I saw a guy walking the streets, mm -hmm. zigzagging. Mm -hmm. I said, why can't you walk straight? So <laughs> <laughs> I said, why don't you come with me? And I started out in Haines City, mm -hmm. the county games, and mm -hmm. then to the Polk County games, uh, and then to the state. Sunshine State Games, which we've been happy to host here in Polk County a number of years. Yeah, over in Lakeland, mm -hmm. Lake Hollingsworth. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, so I did race walk, and I, I think I made about 10 years in a row the state gold medal. Wow. And I made, I missed, not this year, but the previous, every other year we have the nationals. Mm -hmm. The other one was in Sa Sacramento, uh, California. I missed the gold by a quarter of a second. Oh my gosh. There was a pole and that, so that's, that's a camera, you know. Mm -hmm. But then it was another two feet farther down the oh, line. So, mercy. But then my wife said, I still should have made the gold with a nose like I have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, so you, you started in uh, Davenport 18 years ago. Right. Yes. Uh, just walking around the the community that you lived in, and you turned into a, uh, a national work. traveler and uh, yeah. and a champion. Yeah. First, I went to Orlando to learn by the ma with the masters, and then I went, I guess, two or three times, and that, there's nothing, I c not much I can learn here. You know, they were slower than me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a club having a good time, so uh, I kept on going and had the success and. Um, Still proud of it, and uh, now maybe within the next ten years, I have another chance. Yeah. So, so you obviously you you compete locally in the in the Poke oh. Games. Oh yeah. So, how many years have you have you won the Poke Games? At least ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Eight, ten years. Age groups. Age group, of course. Yeah. 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 And then uh, you advance that on to the state games, every, uh, also. which are which yeah. are held every year as well. Um, yes. And then I went to different states like Arizona, Nevada, Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, and other different states. Now I just signed up today, yesterday for Georgia Senior Games. I have never been there. Okay, and, that, and that's, a, that's actually a newer trend that a lot of the individual state games are now accepting people from, from outside their yeah. state and calling it basically an international competition or a national yes, competition. Yes, they do it um, in Polk County. Yes. We have one guy from Canada. Mm -hmm. And then my daughter lives in North Carolina and they don't take me up there. I could go as a volunteer. Right. Or I'll have to move there. <laughs> <laughs> and you buy another home. And you can have yeah. triple residency. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, the 2013 National Senior Games, uh, you won a gold and a silver. Uh, medal in the sport of race walking, and you competed in the 80 to 84 year old yes. uh, age group. Yes, sir. Well, tell us about that. What what was that experience like? And uh, it's a, uh, I would call it to get there and to do something. It's a lot of willpower and a lot of suffering. 
<laughs> Willpower and suffering. <laughs> kind of, yes. Sir. That kind of sounded like what Lee was telling us about trying to be a yeah. professional golfer. Oh, where okay. It was a lot of hard work, but uh, your gold medal came in the 1500 meter race with a time of... Uh, 10, 23. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell, tell, how much training do you do a day? What, what are you, how are you training I do about yourself? A, almost every day, uh, 5K. I live at Hartridge Hills and that's a nice, or I go to Hartridge Hills Park on Havendale. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's nice to walk down there too. And early in the morning, there's not much, uh, nobody in your way actually. Fantastic. Um, your time was actually two seconds better than your 2012 time. So they say things, some things get better with age. You certainly seem to be uh, doing that. Yes, thank you. Uh, I. I lost weight, somewhat, maybe five, eight points, and then the coach, uh, oh, there she is. <laughs> uh, good teamwork and uh, desire. Uh, I thought, you're not going to get me this time. I'm the youngest from the 80 to 84, and I don't want to have anybody younger than me or older than me beating me. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so, Ted, there certainly is some unique aspects to race walking. Yes. So, so tell us, what are, what are the things that make race walking different from just normal walking? Well, you have so many churches, and it's, I think it's a, a very undesirable event because you have so many churches, and they have a yellow and a red uh, shuffle. When they turn out the yellow head, it says, you better be careful, you're at the limit from mm -hmm. having bent knees or lifting. Lifting means if two feet would be off the ground, then right. the weather would be running. So, uh, and in my age group, I think people should be better qualified or better trained. Then they pay $160, $70 to get up there. And they, we had three in my age group that got disqualified. Oh, wow. And that hurts. In every other sports, either you are good and, or you jump higher or faster, but you don't get kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> and that is kind of one of the differences where the, they have referees that yes. are either watching you around, the, if you're around a track, or even out on a, on a 5K course like at Lake also, Hollingsworth. They drive around, you have to wear a number on your front and your back, and they back. may be watching you from behind, you don't even know. Then you've got another number here, and then you've got a, a lap counter. Which is yep. a, it, 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 a computer counts you. Or the chips, yeah. The chips, yes. So it is an interesting sport. I've, I've seen times where um, they don't, sometimes they don't even tell the, the participants That's and they get all the way to the end and yeah. they're looking for their result and all of a sudden they, they find out they were disqualified. Yeah. Uh, and they explained it to me before the start. I, they said, that we don't have to show you the red. Right. Uh, but we can tell you afterwards. Uh, and the funny thing is when there's an out outhouse, you know, mm -hmm. and they told us if you have to go during the race, you have to go in and straight and you come back out. You cannot take a shortcut <laughs> when you come out of the... So you have to take a right-hand turn and then come yeah. straight back out 90 degrees. Huh? And uh, when you do race walk, no bent knees. And he said when the ladies go to the pout house, no bent knees inside there. Hmm. So, oh, wow, well, that's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> 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 well, I think one of the neat things about this, and, and, and we've seen it in this show, we've had basically three different levels of, of athletes or talk, uh, discussions about athletes because in our first segment we talked about uh, these high school athletes and, and the stars that they are here in Polk County and getting Division One scholarships. In our second we talked about mm -hmm. how Lee was one of those that got a scholarship and now is going professional in golf and now we have an amateur uh, uh, athlete here who is going and winning national championships. So Polk County is, is certainly a, a destination of champions and, and you've got some of your medals with you, your gold and your silver. If, we can, if you can hold that up so uh, we can see it on the camera there, just straight, just straight ahead there. Um, just hold it right there, there right go. there. We can zoom in on those medals there. Uh, but uh, just just fantastic, and uh, we certainly appreciate you, all your hard work and dedication being a resident here of Polk County and uh, going up there and winning those national uh, senior game medals. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. The first time I went to the nationals, that was in Orlando, and I signed up as a member of Switzerland. So when they had the Swiss flag, you know, 
and the banner for every state had a banner, so they had a banner for Switzerland, and I was the only guy walking behind. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we we certainly appreciate it. We we certainly want to talk to you more here uh, off camera for a second. So if you'll hang tight, but we certainly appreciate you coming on, Mr. Sager, and congratulations. Uh, we got ahead to break, but uh, we look forward to you winning uh, more medals and representing Polk County in the future. Thank you. All right. Thank appreciate. you. Appreciate. Well, we will uh, take a, a break here and look at some footage of another great uh, athlete in Polk County, Hope Saunders, a swimmer and senior at George Jenkins High School. Uh, stick around, everybody. We'll be right back here on Sports Central. I started swimming when I was eight, and my dad had swam his entire life, and then my brothers swam, and so he's kind of like a family thing to do and then I just kept going with it. Someone that in, like, inspires me and makes me want to keep going is definitely Coach Mike and because he's really good at motivating and he's good at like motivating me and keeping me in shape and just like making me feel really good about where I'm at in the season and also my dad because he's done this whole swimming thing and so um, if I ever have like problems he'll come and give me like advice on how to just like stay motivated and instead of like wanting to quit or just take a break. I like Ryan Lochte, he's a favorite athlete because um, he just, he always just seems like happy and looks like he really likes the sport and enjoys it. And we also have the same birthday, so <laughs> bond. And, um, but like I met him one time at a swim meet and he was just like really nice and really open and you can just like talk to him about really anything. I mean, I think swimming's like an Olympic, is kind of like everyone's dream, but um, I'm going to most likely swim in college and then I'll see how far I get there. But if like nothing happens, it'll just, I think it'll be like the end. But um, I do see swimming being like a big part of my life, like even when I like out of college, like just like working out and stuff. So swimming will always be a part of me. I like smaller colleges and um, probably, probably not like division one or anything, but um, like a small Christian college just that's like kind of homey and not like big and overwhelming. I like history. I like world history specifically. I checked out my freshman year. I just like, I really liked, we started like the beginning of time and just like moved forward. And it was just really interesting learning about like how everything just like came to be. In college, I think I might um, major in like nutrition or something with food so I can um, like be healthy throughout my entire life and like with my family. I one day have a family and I wanted to own a restaurant, I wanted to be a chef, but I'm thinking nutrition more than culinary. But when I'm not swimming or at school or something, I'm usually either sleeping, eating, or um, I usually just like hang out with my friends. I'm not just like, I go to the mall, I go to the movies, I don't really do anything like too much like energy requiring stuff just because I'm so tired, but it's just nice to like relax when I have my off time. What gets me motivated for me, I always have to tell myself that like I've put in the work, I've put in the effort, and I have to have a positive attitude because if I don't, I'm not going to be mentally prepared. Um, I always think about all the time I've put into it and how much I've um, like sacrificed to be where I am, and so I just have to tell myself that it, it's all going to work out. And I mean, of course, pump up music and um, and just like my teammates, we like we're really good at encouraging each other. The biggest swimming accomplishment would probably be when I made it to high school state this year. Um, my the relay team and I, we both our relays made it, and so we were really excited because that was like our season goal was to make it to state. And then I also made it to state in my tutor I am, which I was really excited about because that's what I was focusing on the majority of the season. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Mark Zimmerman, and uh, what a great show! And, and and before we get into local update, and I kind of I kind of hit on it when we were talking to Mr. Sager, but we kind of went through the different stages of a professional athlete Definitely. because we talked about the you know the high school level, and then you had someone like Lee that talking about um, 
from high school to college and mm -hmm. now trying to be professional. And then you had an individual like Mr. Sager who, you know, is in his 80s and still still performing at a high level here and, as a citizen. And didn't County. even start competing until he was in his late 60s. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, obviously not originally from Poe County, but uh, moving over here from Switzerland. And, uh, yeah. you know, what a, what a great story out there winning race walking national championships. You think you could uh, actually beat him in a race? I don't drive that far without being <laughs> tired. But uh, this fourth and final segment of Sports Central brought to us by the Hyatt Place Lakeland. And uh, we're going to get into a local update and some events that are coming up uh, here locally. Of course, uh, you and your team on the sports and special, sports and sales, uh, sports sales side of things uh, bring a number of these events in. And let's talk about a few of them that are upcoming. Yeah, obviously our team's out there working every day, uh, going out, recruiting events, bringing them in, working with our local organizers. Mm -hmm. Uh, to try to get events into Polk County that are, are generating overnight stays, uh, you know, people leaving leaving their their dollars in Polk County for uh, for our residents to then uh, you know spend and, and and continue to circulate around the community. A um, couple of ones, uh, one actually coming up this weekend, Trail to Trail race. Uh, it's a long-standing race, been um, something that is done down at Lois Harp Park mm -hmm. uh, in uh, in Mulberry, South Lakeland area. Right. Uh, some great trails out there for you to, for people to ride, but it's kind of a combination of uh, mountain biking and road racing, and they, they go off the mountain bikes, they go onto the roads, they come back. Uh, so it's really an interesting race. It's, it's uh, on Saturday, uh, this upcoming Saturday. So if you're watching this after, you certainly don't want to go out there. Big information about next year. Yeah. Yeah. But it is a great race. A uh, good local organizer, Red Trail Racing. They put on lots of events throughout the year. So if you miss this one race, they have lots of events going on. Uh, at down at Lois Harp Park. Well, I know the uh, Independent Softball Association does a number of events here in Polk County. We got some this weekend, so we won't cover all those. But right. there's some events upcoming uh, that they that they have coming to the Bartow Lakeland area. Yeah, the uh, the Florida ISA uh, certainly put on a lot of events in our county. Uh, we're very excited. We have a great partnership with them. I've been with them for a long time, uh, putting on the Adult State Championships and the Youth C State Championships uh, Saturday, August 17th and 18th. Uh, you know, it's a great competition out there. Obviously, Florida, well known for its softball uh, players, not just on the youth level, but in the adult level, winning national championships upon national championship. And it's a great event uh, taking place uh, at several different venues. Obviously, you don't have the, uh, the youth playing with the adults. You right. play, at, play at different places. So, uh, so there'll be some great events going on uh, next couple weekends. That's, that's certainly just one of them. Another softball event, the Freedom Sports Co-Ed States. Uh, what's that all about? That it, it, you know, again, uh, one of the groups we work with, Freedom Sports, they put on several events. They, they put on events actually throughout the state. Uh, this event will be at the Diamond Plex. It'll be the end of August, uh, actually on Labor Day weekend. Uh, Diamond Plex in Winter Haven, uh, well known across, across the nation, really, as one of the best softball complexes you can get into. And uh, so it's a, this, you know, again, a, a good quality tournament for not only for for our local residents have the opportunity to play in, but another event that's going to bring teams from outside the area and have them stay overnight. Let's change gears a little bit to uh, the uh, to racing. Uh, we had uh, Mr. Sager on talking about uh, with the walking, <clears throat> the Aching Quad Race Series. Yes, I love the name. What does it mean? Okay, well the Aching Quad is set up. Um, it's it's one your quads will be killing you afterwards. <laughs> uh, two, it's actually four races in 24 hours. Wow. It's, uh, it's running races. It's, it starts off with a 5K on Friday night around Lake Hollingsworth. Uh, then you go in on Saturday morning at 7. You go a one mile race around Lake Morton. Uh, People do this for fun. Let me stop. Yes. People do this for fun. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is, it's, it's, it's actually an interesting I race. Understand, but. Uh, so <laughs> then, it, then it follows up at 9.30 mm -hmm. with a two mile race around Lake Hunter. Um, and so these, these are all lakes uh, right there, in la right kind of in the downtown area of right. Lakeland. The, the races are only a couple miles apart. And then you finish it up on Saturday night uh, with another 5K around Lake Hollingsworth. The goal is to try to beat your time from the previous night. So that's, right. that's kind of the idea. But it's a series, so your, your time accumulates throughout the series. So if you, are, if you have the lowest total time okay. of, of, the, of your age group or overall, then obviously you're going to win. But it's a great event put on by the Lakeland Runners Club, a uh, group that I'm heavily involved with, uh, a mm -hmm. group that's putting on a lot of events in Poe County um, every year. That The Lakeland Runners Club actually finishing up the, the Watermelon Series, uh, which is a series of four races spread over four months this time, uh, or three months. But it is something that a lot of people get involved with. It's a way to keep people running and active over the summer. 
That's going to be September 13th and 14th, and uh, for more information, you go to LakelandRunnersClub.org. Another event on the uh, that, that weekend, Saturday, September 14th, the Backwoods Challenge, another type of a running event, but this is a 5K mud obstacle challenge, right? Yeah, yeah, this is uh, this is a, certainly the hottest thing going right now, mm -hmm. the, the uh, mud runs, the uh, glow runs, the color runs are, are definitely by far the hottest thing in running Crazy right now. Crazy events to get people out running, yes. right? Yes, yeah, I mean, and really what happens with this is a lot of people are not typical runners who go out right. and, and do these events. They're just someone looking to go have a good time with their friends and their family. Uh, so this one held up in Polk City. Uh, it's actually on the, uh, the Combi property, if anybody's familiar with that area. Uh, but these guys put on several events a year. Uh, benefits the Special Olympics of Florida, so a great cause. Um, they put on some really good events. They do several throughout the year. And, uh, you know, it, it is, you're getting off into the woods, you're running through obstacles, you're running through mud. Uh, it's just a way for people to get out there, have some fun, support a good cause. Changing gears to October, uh, October 13th, excuse me, October 8th through the 13th, uh, USA IPC Nationals. And uh, it's not a stick and ball type of event. It's a different kind of event, but uh, great event, great economic impact for Polk County, what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, and these guys could probably shoot a stick and ball out of your hand right. and not even touch you. <laughs> right. uh, these are really some of the top shooters uh, that, that will then advance. These, this is a way for these them, some of these shooters to get on the United States team mm -hmm. who would then advance to the 2014 which is World right Shoot, which will be held here County. in Polk County. Absolutely. Also in Frostproof at the Universal Shooting Academy. Um, if, if most people have never heard of it, the Universal Shooting Academy is a great place. Uh, Frank Garcia, who runs that facility, uh, is a world-class shooter, has been bringing in lots of fantastic shooting events. Um, these guys are our top-level shooters. They really know what they're doing. They practice all the time, and it is one of the, one of the top events, in the, not only in the country, but in the world. All right. Well, as we're running out of time here, we want uh, to thank some of our special sponsors who made this program and uh, Tourism Sports Marketing possible, Travel Lodge, Terrace Hotel, Harry Seafood Bar and Grill, Abuelos, and Legoland Florida. Again, just some of the partners that uh, make Sports Central possible. We'd also like to uh, remind you that you can always go to centralfloridasports.com or visit centralflorida.org for more information about uh, upcoming events in Polk County. You can also give us a call at 8 Six three five five one four seven five zero. The next edition of Sports Central will be live on Friday, August twenty third. Until then, uh, if you want to see the better half of Sports Central, not Mark and Hank, but Neil and Mark, <laughs> <laughs> you can check out the following dates and times that this show will be re-aired. And we will catch you again next time. For Mark Zimmerman, I'm Neil Duncan. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>